Hey guys, Kate from Kate and Barrel Designs here. I am going to be showing you guys all about the redesign by Prima molds today. So I've been working on this little side table behind me. I did a video on how to attain the stripes that I did on this little side table. And now you can see a little bit, I have been working on molds. So I'm going really Baroque and over the top, very floral, decorative, and kind of making it a way more ornate piece than it was to start. So here we go. So molds that I'm using today, and my challenge was to use three different molds and be able to incorporate them into one piece. So I'm using Winter Blooms right here, Cherry Blossoms, and In the Garden. Okay, so all three of these are available on my website. And I am going to be utilizing, let me grab a new one. Today, I'm just using the creative paper clay. So it's nothing super fancy. It's just air dry clay. You can get it at Michael's, buy it on Amazon, all that good stuff. Uh, Prima does have an air dry clay that you can purchase as well, which is awesome. So you can do one stop shopping and get everything all together. And then we're going to be utilizing our glue to put this on. Okay, so I'll show you what glue I'm using as well. The glue can get a little messy. <laughs> so just so you kind of can see the phases too so far. Um, so this is what it looks like when this is all dried and unpainted. And this is what a leg looks like when it's dry and it's painted. I'm not done yet, but it's a start. Okay. So let's work on this leg together right here. All right. So I'm actually going to bring you guys in nice and close and you'll be able to see the leg. If I can get that. There we go. Okay. So up nice and close. Okay. So I'm going to use, and obviously I've been using these already. So I'm going to put some starch inside to kind of allow the clay to lift out of it. I've got a little crunchies in there still, so I wanna make sure I get those out. Out of my way. Here's the cherry blossom one. Definitely have some crunchies in there. Okay. Note to self, clean your stuff. <laughs> it's not like it gets stuck. I mean, this is like a silicone base, so it doesn't really get stuck on there, but okay. So here's the starch. I just go ahead, like a cookie, like you're, you know, baking sheet, or like if you're rolling dough and baking and you're putting it on your, um, your surface before you roll the dough out. That's kind of the idea of this. It just gives it a little more um, ability to pop the clay out. It doesn't really stick. This is just my uh, catch-all just in case, right? This one gives a really big flower right here. And the base color, just so you guys know too, the base color that I used on here is uh, Smoky Quartz. And I have used um, the metallic gilding paint in uh, Mercury, which is basically like our, our dark silver, which is super pretty. Okay. So just kind of get any excess out of there. Okay. Things I should do, take my rings off. Close this back up, Oop, or not. All right, so I have one already open. I'm utilizing a key card from the Sheraton. They told us we could keep it. Um, so my husband had this lying around. I tried to utilize the Spread Pal. These are awesome for 3D stenciling, but not so much for the uh, wiping off of the clay. So. Let's start with some cherry blossoms. I double bag when I'm storing this, just in case. I don't want it to get hard, so I won't be able to use it again. 
So kind of this is what it looks like, okay? Just break the piece off. Put the rest back in the bag. Put that over here. It takes about 24 hours for it to dry, so just make sure that you're cognizant of that. You're not trying to rush through this project. It's gonna take you a while. So basically what I do, I'm gonna move this back. You guys can see right here, okay? So there's the mold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take my clay and press it into the section of the mold that I want to get, okay? Just kind of press it in there. Every once in a while, it's gonna to try to lift up. So you wanna kind of prevent that from happening. Just kind of spread it in there. This actually is a full on Gets all the way up in here too. So it's a pretty decent sized one. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off. I press down and scrape all at the same time. Okay. Take that extra, put it up there. So press down and scrape. And again, it lifted just a little more than I wanted to. So I'm just gonna press it back into the mold. too might as well turn it so I try to make sure I'm staying along the edging right here and I kind of get my guide of my edge right and I'm pressing down but also pulling at the same time and then I just take my excess put it off to the side so the cards flexible enough where I can I can press in and kind of bend and drag across and you do want to use a decent amount of pressure i'm not being dainty with it that's for sure definitely smoothing out the back though get all around these edges right here all along this edging see gotta get in there Okay, so this is this is a bigger one, so it's gonna be tricky. I'm gonna pop this little tiny flower out though. So there's that little tiny flower, little bud. And then I'm gonna start working. I'm gonna kind of bend it and flip it, right? Into my hand. If it breaks, it breaks. It's not the end of the world. I can still use all the pieces no matter what. But there you have it. So there's the full mold right there. And there is a little sense of, yep, it just broke in that one little spot, which is totally fine. Like I said, I'm still gonna be able to use it all over the leg, okay? So there we go, that is just one. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep on working on these.
Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is where things can get a little messy sometimes, and I get glue all over me, but it's worth it in the end. So, what I want to do is start putting on the molds all throughout this leg, okay? And none of the patterns are going to be the same. So, every leg is going to have a different pattern with different... Um, the same flowers, but in different places, right? So I think with this, I'm going to start with this flower right here. The reason I keep them wet is because then I can bend it. So I'm going to be using, if I can hold on to it, it's a mess, but it's my tight bond, instant bond. It's a wood adhesive, but it works really well for this. And it has a really quick bond, which is what I like. So I don't have to worry about things slipping to places that I don't want them to slip to. So, like I said, I can bend this however I need to to get it on. more. There we go. Perfect. And it will crack a little as it dries and I'm totally okay with that. Don't need a lot of glue. Just little dabs to make it stick. I have flowers on the toe, but I think it'd be fun to have a leaf on the toe too.
So there you have it. That is how I kind of go about making sure that I'm getting all the molds and putting them together and doing kind of a unique different pattern on each individual leg. And the next step is going to be to paint. So stay tuned and we will be back. All right, so we are back. So we're still waiting for the molds that we just finished to dry. However, I already had a leg done. So let's go ahead and start painting that with the smoky quartz. So this is the chalk synthesis paint. I put mine in these um, <clears throat> FIFO bottles, first in, first out. So this is smoky quartz. I'm gonna use my R18 brush. I've been using it, okay? So I put some I put some plastic around it and that saves it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the leg because this is the one we're gonna be painting right here, okay? I also have some artist brushes that I'm gonna be pulling out because I wanna be able to detail around. So I have some, some spots right here where it's really close to the metallic. And so I don't wanna completely cover that with smoky quartz. So I'm gonna have to detail that a little bit more than maybe like I normally would, okay? So I actually load my brush up pretty decently. And what you wanna do is you wanna kinda of like dab in, cause you're trying to get kind of like all the nooks and crannies, right? So because it's so detailed, you wanna get paint in all those areas to get any white or cream or whatever it is covered up, right? So <clears throat> getting in here, then I just kind of wipe off any excess. Gotta get down in those little sections. So it kind of just pounce along. And I'm using my Klingon R18. You can kind of see how it transforms
So there you have it. I went in and detailed with the artist brush to make sure I kind of got all the nooks and crannies. After this dries, I'm probably gonna need to go through um, and maybe do another coat, just like I went over and did another kind of touch up coat on this leg over here. Look how amazing this mercury is though. Isn't that just gorgeous? Love it. So then what I'm gonna do is I do wanna take the mercury and incorporate it back in. And I've decided I'm gonna do something really cool to the top as well. So stay tuned, take a look at my other videos and you'll be able to see what I have planned for next. So again, my name's Kate and I am the owner and creator of Kate and Burl Designs in Tucson, Arizona. And if you guys enjoyed this and liked learning about the molds, please give me a thumbs up. I would so appreciate it. You can purchase all your Prima and Wiseau products used in this video on my website, kateandbarreldesigns.com, and the link will be in the comments. So thanks so much, you guys. Till next time. Bye.